All right, everybody, we made it throughout the week. It's Friday, and um, it's Good Friday at that. And this whole weekend, this whole week, we're recognizing the uh, sacrifice that Jesus did for us. Yesterday, I spoke on um, us being sinners and, you know, why everything had to go the way it had to go to get more of an understanding and clarity. And I'm not going to take too much of your time again today. We're going to speak more about um, two people. Really three, okay? I'm gonna focus in on the two thieves that hung on the one of either side of Jesus, okay? And uh, we go to Luke 23, chapter 23, and uh, we're gonna go from verse 29 to 43. The first, in the first verse, I'm reading out New King James. And um, in the first verse, it says, Then one of the criminals who were hung or hang blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. Already, even hanging at the cross, he was still being insulted. He was still being uh, talked to in such a crazy manner, you know, throughout his death. No matter, Jesus' whole ministry from the time he started was out of love and compassion for others. He would heal the ones who need to be healed. He forgave the ones who need to be forgiven. He did what he did out of love. And still towards the end, Jesus was doing this, knowing that all this was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And this was the one thing that was on the one side that was just even still cursing God towards the end. And some, some of us are like that. Some of us, well, some people just will never change. It doesn't matter what's going on. Some people will never go through that type of situation and not completely understand. But then let's go to the other thief. And it says, and we'll continue on in verse 40. It says, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we, and we indeed justify for what we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. This thief right here knew exactly who Jesus was. He knew that he was the son. He knew that he was the Christ. And not even on top of that, he was already in a form of repentance telling Jesus, telling the other guy, look, me and you are here for a reason. Me and you are on this cross and being condemned to death solely right because of what we have done. We are reaping what we have sold into this world. We are going through this because of the things that we have done. But this man right here that's hanging on this cross is innocent, has done no wrong, has done nothing, nothing. This thief, he's recognizing this. And he goes on to tell him, and we're going to carry on words of right here. Then he says to Jesus, he turns to Jesus and he tells him, Lord, remember me when you come in to your kingdom. At the end, this man repented. At the end, this man was saying, forgive me, Lord, in such a way. He was saying it. And all that says right here to each and last one of us is this. It's never, you You always have a chance. You always have an opportunity to give your life to Christ. You always have an opportunity to repent from what you have done, even if it costs you to the very end. But there's always that chance. But you have to repent. You have to humble yourself. You have to bring yourself together in front of the throne of God and you're on your knees and say, Father, forgive me for what I've done. Forgive me for what I've done. And Jesus, with all our compassion, compassion is still going through the worst pain imaginable, being on that cross, being beaten, being strung out. Jesus was in the worst thing unimaginable. People, pitch, please picture this in your mind. Have you ever seen the movie The Passion of Christ? Picture this in your head. Regardless of you believe or you don't believe, he was going through such a pain at this moment in time where he could have spent most of his time on his cross condemning. He could have spent most of his time on the cross sitting here cursing everybody around him, cursing the thief, cursing the other one. Jesus at the end still had compassion because he knew the word had to be fulfilled. Jesus replies to him and tells him, and Jesus said to him, as surely as I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Today you will be with me in paradise. People, understand this. God, God is waiting for you. God is waiting for each and last one of us to come to that point in that place in our life where we repent, where we ask for forgiveness, 
will we seek him and understand and believe in him and what he did for us. And that's what he's saying now. This is the story of the crucifixion. This is the story of the cross. People understand that. You have to repent. You have to repent from what you have done and what you have continued to do. And God already paid the price for you. This gift was a free gift. At the same time, it isn't a free gift because you have to give up your life. You have to be crucified. You have to crucify your old self and be brought to be resurrected brand new in Him. And He wants you to live a life of fulfillment. He wants you to live a life of abundance. Okay? But abundance in here. In here. This doesn't matter. The physical sense. This right here. None, none of this doesn't matter. But in here, in the Holy Spirit, this is what He's talking to you about. I know some people, it's Easter, it's Easter. About the rabbits and about the chocolates and about the eggs and about this and that. But people understand what I'm telling you. This ain't what it's about. It's about these two thieves right here. Well, one, one, made a decision to continue in his ways. That one was so ignorant. He didn't know what he had in front of him. He didn't know who he had next to him. He didn't know at all. And then you have the other one. The second thief, okay, the second thief who recognized who Jesus was, he was the Christ, and he repented, and he told Jesus, he didn't say all he said to Jesus, strong word, remember me, remember me when we enter into your kingdom, remember me. Jesus said, I have compassion enough that surely on this day you will be with me. You need to ask yourself those questions, will Jesus say those things to you? Well, are you living a type of life that is just worth, worthy of his crucifixion? Was your life that you're living now, or the life that you're living now, worthy of him hanging on that cross? It is. But you have to repent, and you have to move forward with that. And understand what we are celebrating on this past weekend, the past couple of days, and that we are celebrating more recognizing he has won. He has won the victory. He triumphed over death. He try off the people. You guys are blessed. We love you. Uh, continue on with this in a couple of days. And then, uh, tomorrow, like I said, once again, 745 at my house. Inbox me if you want to know the address. We'll be having our little uh, Bible study here with some food and all that. Everybody's welcome. Um, everybody's welcome here. All right? You guys are blessed. Love you. See you all later.